get closer to the mic if you can. Can, can you hear me now? Okay. I need everybody to mute their phones, though. I'm hearing someone talking. Okay. Tammy Taylor once stated that a woman could wear the greatest outfit, but her nails, of course, make the greatest statement. Approximately 104 million women in the United States wear either nail polish or any nail care products. Hi, everyone. My name is Cheyenne Hogan. I am 15 years old, and I am the CEO and founder of Shy's Rope. I currently attend USC Hybrid High in Los Angeles, California. Shy's Rope is a five free any nail polish brand, free from five harmful chemicals to include formaldehyde, formaldehyde residents, camphor, sabolene, and dibutyl. For many years, my mother, grandmother, and I have visited local nail salons through our community, but it wasn't until my grandmother was diagnosed with breast cancer is when I furthered my research in the nail care industry. As I am an animal and all things beauty lover, it was a very big struggle for me to find vegan and cruelty-free polishes. So that's when I started to do my research into the nail polish industry to find vegan and cruelty-free polish with vibrant colors and glitters, but I noticed that there weren't any in the market. So it t I took upon myself and I said, well, let me start one. So I wanted to change the way how people view nail polish. And then that's how I started Shy's Row. So right now, currently Shy's Row does everything in-house and has produced over 20 shades of colors from rainbow colors to iridescent to glitters. And it, with that, we have the product, de uh, product development, testing, productions, and labeling to ensure the best quality of our products. Some of our features include dry quickly, apply smoothly, last long, and quick through. But our polish isn't where it stops. Monthly, I do an online, what, an online class and an in-class, an in-person class with inner city youth kids, teaches them the importance of starting their own business now. Also explains to them their target audience, how to market, brand, and how to pitch, as what I'm doing today. It is my goal to be the inspiration for young youth and to help them pave their way and have their own path like I have mine. But my ultimate dream is to get my polishes into stores such as Ulta Beauty, Sephora, CVS, Urban Outfitters, and more. With an investment of $5,000, Shy's World can expand our line by hiring sales, sales reps and mixologists. This will allow us to increase our production and also it'll help us to launch and branch ourselves out to more buyers who are interested and love our brand just as much as we do. So our marketing strategy plan is we want to use influencers, emails, direct sales, social media, trade shows, and fundraisers with schools throughout the nation. Shy's World has been seen on the real TV show, Harry Comet, and well, I'm I'm sorry. Sorry. And maybe go to the park or something. We'll see. Right. It has been an honor for me to be also featured on Team Boss Magazine, Vogue LA, LA, and I've also had the opportunity to be awarded Her Eyes Matter from Black Business Rock. We are confident that with a plan, our immediate execution of your investment, we can produce a valuable business with a sustainable and growth. And we want you to help us put our best hand forward with Shy's World. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, judges. Questions? Um, hi, Shy. Hi. Um, so great presentation. Um, but my question for you is what are your top selling um, items? So right now our top selling items is our newest collection that has came out. So it's basically our nail polish, but we also have other um, products such as cuticle pins and brow kits. So yes, our nail polish. Um, this is Ryan, a uh, quick question. So you've been doing this for quite some time. What is something that you discovered that was really different or new in this process? Like, you know, with, with all that you did, what was something that like really surprised you in this, in this uh, um, venture? Well, with starting a business, what surprised me is everything that goes into the background of a business, because of course it may look very simple in the front, but everything that you have to put all the effort, all the time that you have to put in the background of a business was probably like the most surprising thing that I didn't fully understand until like I got to be a teenager. Thank you. <coughs> uh, just a quick question. So how do you find time to run a business and going to school as a teenager. And then the other question I have is, do you have partners in this? Uh, or are you doing it you know, mostly by yourself? 
So, um, yes, it is a very difficult task. And I have did a lot of time managing because my school is from eight to four and then I do extracurriculum activities. So I always set like one to two days out of my business, uh, out of my business days to have just a day to have production and a day just to have to ship all of my polishes. And who also helps me is my mother. She does most of my marketing. My dad is over more the financial part. And then I have other people to help me like squeeze the bottles. We have a lot of mixologists. Excellent. Thank you. Shai, one question for me. Um, how many units have you sold? So right now we have sold um, approximately let me see. It should be on the paper, but we have sold approximately 500 units, and we get about $1,500 to $2,000 a month. Do you have something you can show us? Do you have your product? Um, this is So this is our regular everyday colors, and then um, this is a sneak peek into our new line that we're launching. This is it's like an iridescent. It changes like different colors. So this is what we're about to launch soon. But these are our um, regular colors right here. Okay. Great. One more question from a judge. Okay. Thank you so much. Judges, take about a minute or two and jot down your scores. So what are you going out there for? Okay, guys, there is somebody who needs to mute their call, their line. Thank you. Okay, judges, you ready? Time to go on to spill the tea. Ladies. Hi. <laughs> so tell us your name, give us your school, your age, um, and then you can get, get started. All right, so um, I'm Ashita. I'm 16 years old. We're all from Edison, New Jersey, and we go to the Millsex County Academy for um, STEM. I'm Sharanya, I'm 17, and I'm Janice, and I'm also 17. Okay, I want you ladies to, to speak up a little bit for us, um, and then you can get started. Thank you. Ready? Okay. Uh, no, this, this ain't it. I want something different. Hmm, actually, I might have something to solve the problem. Should I spill the tea? So hi, like we, like we mentioned before, I'm Ashita, this is Janice. Um, we're from Edison, New Jersey, and we're part of Spill the Tea, which is a company which is dedicated to providing bubble tea to your doorstep whenever, wherever, and we're gonna make the experience fun and appetizing. So we created Spill the Tea after realizing that there was a huge gap in the market for this popular drink. We realized that one of the main reasons for this gap was because of the limited accessibility of bubble tea. So that's exactly the problem that we intend to solve when we make our box bubbles, which are DIY bubble tea kits that we've released. So with every product you have, you know, your competition. So we wanna address our biggest and direct competitor, which is inertia. So inertia being that we are bringing something that's completely new and innovative to the market. And when people aren't aware of it, unaware of it, they're unsure of you know, what to do. So we need to prove to them that they are going to make this investment and they're going to want to purchase our product. So in addition to that, we do have our indirect competitors such as Kung Fu Tea and Kung Cha. And although we want to, um, you know, these may be our direct, indirect competition, we want to stress that none of these companies do what we do. And to talk about our value pro proposition and what makes us unique is how we are a community-driven business. We are actually the first um, high school startup in um, our school, as well as the first startup in our community. And we intend not to just use the profit that we make for ourselves, but invest it in other businesses just like ours. You know, we want to be able to support other high schoolers who want to do what we do. 
And um, with our appearances on multiple platforms, you know, such as Wall Street Journal, um, Changemakers, the Defiant Movement, we've really been able to gain that publicity we need to inspire others. And we've also gave a talk at our school to also spread the word and intend to speak at an upcoming TEDx event, which is going to happen in our local community. And all of this is with the purpose to cultivate, you know, the young generation's mind to not be afraid to do what they want to do. All right, so next we wanna address um, our COGS, which is our cost of goods sold. Um, in the beverage industry, most products actually have an average gross margin of about 80%, which is currently um, matching up with our numbers. However, we also need to think about licenses and permits. We need to make sure we're branding ourselves appropriately. And we definitely wanna reach more customers through social media marketing. And obviously there's this huge power of the internet and we definitely want to you know, start right, get that foundation. So in terms of business already, we've sent out our first wave of orders um, to our first kick um, customers. And we've also developed a survey to gain feedback, which actually got a lot of hits. Um, and we've refined our product so that you know, it's better in the future. We're already planning on launching a new wave of these kits that should be ready to ship um, during the holiday season, which we, will which, we will, which we believe will be our most successful successful. So we also want to utilize the financial resources um, to invest in our own website. So currently we're on Etsy, but Etsy is a great way to promote and publicize our product. However, they do have like a lot of fees and we want to be able to get away from that just to, you know, brand ourselves on our own and definitely want to get away from those fees that take away from our product. Okay. So 30 seconds. Mm-hmm. So with that being said, we just really want to thank you for this opportunity to speak with you guys and hope that you're able to get a little bit of our insight and join us in spilling the tea. Great job. Thank you. Judges? Um, hi. That was great, ladies. I love the intro. I thought that was good. <laughs> thank you. Um, so uh, do you have any um, – okay, so explain to me what the actual product is. I know you guys said it was um, a packaged um, bubble mm -hmm. tea um, that can mm – -hmm. All right, so um, our actual product is like a bubble tea kit. So um, it is basically a way for you to DIY it at home. So our actual product contains um, all the materials that you would need. So obviously the boba, um, the milk, t uh, the tea packets, um, straws, because obviously they're sized differently to actually um, take up the boba. Um, we also contain um, instructions that you would need specifically. So the whole process is only around 10 minutes to make the entire thing. And we give our customer about six servings in one box. So, you know, you have enough for your whole family and then some. So, so what, have, oh. what's the, um, sorry, what's the, um, the cost to make that um, box and then how much do you sell it for? Um, so our cost to make the box is approximately $2. Um, we sell it for around 13, 13, We sell it for $13.99. Yeah. So obviously there's a really high margin there, but that is consistent with the numbers in the beverage industry. And we also want to keep in mind that, um, although the gap is pretty big and it seems that we're generating a lot of revenue, we do want to address that Etsy does take away some of those, um, the profit that we gain. So that's why we, in the end, want to branch out and that will be our final goal. I'm aware about Etsy. <laughs> All right, cool. Thank you. Out of curiosity, I was wondering how you guys arrived at number, like six sort of, uh, you know, six items in the box. Yeah, so basically what we do is we include, um, everything that you need to make your own bubble tea at your, in your own house with all instructions. We have cute little manuals, all of that. Um, and the thing is, if you've ever been to a bubble tea store, some of the prices there can get really high. So we definitely want to give our customers a financial incentive to buy our kits over going to a store if they do live close to you know, a bubble tea cafe or the mall kiosk or anything. But we also realize that a lot of people who enjoy drinking bubble tea, they live, some people have to go drive into a city to get bubble tea, or they have to drive at least 30 minutes just to get to like a local cafe. And the reason we kind of got six was, you know, because the average family has four people and they were thinking, you know, you have two friends over, so. <laughs> More the merrier. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thank you.
Judges, any more questions? So ladies, um, talk to us a little bit about what the judges, what the advice that the judges gave you during rounds one and two, and how have you utilized that advice? So um, one of the things that the judges really pointed out to us was to separate our business models. So in the beginning, we kind of came in with like um, a really flawed business model. We um, had something about catering and then we also talked about um, developing the new Keurig for bubble tea. And what the judges really made it um, clear to us was that these two were just intersecting and we didn't have like a clear business idea of where we wanted to go in the future. So that was the thing that I would say we built upon the most. Um, we definitely like realized, we sat down, you know, we thought about it. We realized where we wanted to go with this company and what our product should be, how we think that we would have the most success in the future. Um, another thing that we really took into consideration was financials. We didn't really have the strongest financials when we first entered the program. And the judges really told us that, um, of course, the first thing that investors want to hear is, you know, financials, financials, financials. So we need to have like the best numbers in the game, but they also need to be the realist. We can't just like come up with numbers out of nowhere. They have to be accurate. Okay. So that was yeah, one of the things that we Great. used. And going yeah. off of what you oh, said, uh, um, okay. Go ahead, I'm sorry. No, it's okay, go ahead. So great presentation and I love your energy. So I have a question for you guys um, in regards to like product market fit, right? How do you know which flavor of bubble tea, because there's so many of them, is going to be perfect for your customer base? Have you guys, you know, tried your own bubble tea? <laughs> I mean, have yeah. like your parents and your, 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 your siblings and your friends, you know, taste it? And how is it the same as if I went, you know, I took my kids to those bubble tea shops? Or, you know, what's it like? And don't you need a blender and ice and some other stuff? What about that machine that puts that crazy... You know, the top on it, right? How do they do that? Um, so basically, yeah, there's clearly a lot of things that go into it. And that's why in the very beginning, when we started this in our freshman year of high school, we are seniors now, um, we started off with testing our product. Because clearly, if no one likes our drink, then who's going to buy it? So we started off by selling at our school. So during um, our school events, such as barbecues and uh, fairs that we've been hosting, we sold our bubble tea there. And the student body responded very positively, which was something that we didn't expect so soon um, early on in our in the first round of testing and experiments. So we continue to do that and eventually we began to work with things in our local community such as 5k walks and um, other charitable events such as with autism awareness and stuff like that and a lot of people really liked it but you know like you said this is um, on a more smaller scale this is our local community how can we get a better consensus of what other people in you know the world or other parts of the area might think so we actually put a survey on reddit i don't know if you guys heard of it but it's a pretty uh, huge platform where a bunch of different users all around the world can kind of just like collaborate and talk to each other and we put a survey and we ask them you know what is your favorite type of bubble tea um how often do you drink bubble tea and are you willing to maybe purchase a bubble tea kit where you can make your own you know personalized bubble tea and we got a good, I think, 200 or to 250 um, amount of replies. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people said that they would definitely be willing to and open to that because the main reason is that bubble tea is such a popular drink right now and it's really on the rise. So by taking advantage of that and people, you know, understanding that it's not as accessible um, financially, it's a little bit on the expensive side, but it tastes great. So um, we want to make it affordable and also accessible to anyone that wants to drink it. And that is, you know, our main goal. That is our mission statement for our company. Excellent. Thank you. Great job, ladies. Okay, hey, judges, take a little time. Get your scores in. Everybody feeling good? I see smiles. That's a good thing. <laughs>
You guys got them thinking. <laughs> Very proud of all of you. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> And Shia, although I keep butchering your name, you did a fantastic job as well. <laughs> so forgive me, because I'm about to do the same thing to Alinda Beauty. Am I mispronouncing that? Are you ready to go? Yes. Okay. This is our youngest applicant, and um, very proud to see to see her and. You ready? You want to tell them your age, your name, your school, and you can get started. Okay. Did you know that seven out of 10 girls suffer from low self-confidence and I was one of them? I bet you didn't. Good evening. My name is Anaya McCullough, 13 year old beauty formulator for Islani Beauty. I am also a freshman that attends Roosevelt High School in Long Island, New York. Islani Beauty is a company that specializes in creating hair care products that contain natural and organic ingredients. I started formulating products because I didn't like the way my hair was growing. So I was wondering, why should I only help myself when I can help others that have a similar problem? So I created my hair growth oil. My hair growth oil contains some of the most revolutionary and off the market oils and the product smells amazing. But the two most highlighted oils are Parakashi oil and Kalahari melon oil. Parakashi oil is known to prevent hair loss and makes detangling easier. Kalahari melon oil promotes hair growth and keeps your hair and scalp moisturized. Believe it or not, Low self-esteem and low self-confidence is a huge problem, especially found in girls that are in middle school or high school, and we're here to solve it. The purpose of Islani Beauty is to build confidence, develop a healthy self-esteem, and embrace your inner beauty in the face of adversity. Now, you may be wondering, what makes Islani different from other companies? What makes this line different from other companies is that we use oils that are highly effective, but aren't mainstream. And also, what other companies do you know have a 13-year-old beauty formulator? I would say our top competitors are Myel Organics and Main Choice. Yes, I know that these are major brands sold in popular retail stores, but I would want to be at that point someday. So why not aim for the best? We are looking for $5,000 to purchase marketing materials, raw materials in bulk, and for new product formulation. With the additional raw materials, we would like to gift 50 girls in foster care with our hair growth oil, so they too can feel special. So remember, Islani Beauty is the true essence of confidence. Thank you. Islani. Ilani Beauty. I'm, I'm going to work on that, I promise. <laughs> Great job. Judges? I want to do one thing. Um, Majda was muted on the other two, um, other two presentations. So I want to give Majda an opportunity if you have any questions for um, Cheyenne or for Spill the Pea. Um, yes, I actually did have a question. Thank you very much, uh, Michelle. For um, Phil the T, um, I was wondering, given that, you know, kids these, at this, basically teenagers that go to get bubble tea, this is part of the experience. How would they address that, that making it at home is not the same thing as going outside to get it? Is that a concern? Well, I definitely think that DIY is on the rise right now, too. So a lot of people are um, about the whole, you know, look at what I did. I did it myself type of thing. So I don't think that um, the tea, the whole stigma of going to the store is something that's as hard to combat because just because um, of the whole rise of DIY. Thank you. 
and also like yeah it's a really cool experience like we all love going to bubble tea shops as well um but our kids are just financially a better option and you know like as teenagers you don't have a lot of pocket money all the time so it's better for that and also like we have friends that live we live in new jersey which has a good amount of bubble tea um shops like maybe 20-ish minutes away from from where we live but we know people in like pennsylvania or like nebraska who literally don't have bubble tea shops in their area at all so this is also for those types of people who live in like maybe rural areas or areas not close to cities that have this bubble tea inflection yet. Okay, thank you ladies. We're gonna speed it up. Thank you. Uh, Maj, did you have a question for- um, I'm, I'm good, I'm good, thank you. Okay, thank you, thank you. So sorry about that. Um, Ilani, let's, let's get back to your presentation and your Q&A session. Uh, so any, any of the judges, do you have any questions? Yeah, I have a question, Alani, and it's a very powerful uh, message that you're sending. And I have two daughters, and you know, I think self confidence at that age is very important, right? And so I, I really enjoy, you know, your message and your passion, and it really resonates with me as a father of two daughters. So my question for you is, um, you know, how much does this cost, right? And how much are you selling this for? And you know, do people approach you to purchase it, or is there a website? What's the mechanism in order for you to sell your product? Um, is it word of mouth, or you know, could you tell me a little bit more about um, you know how how sales are going? Um, the product costs fourteen ninety nine right now. The cost of goods are fourteen four forty four four forty two actually. And to find the product, we have a social media page. It's called Islani Beauty. It's on Instagram. You can find it too. And there's a website called islanibeauty.com too. And we do some word of mouth to our friends and family and our teachers. So, I mean, uh, this is an all natural product, right? Not really. It's a product, but it contains natural and organic ingredients. Okay, perfect. And you're, you, you make this at home or how, where is it made? Currently it's made at my house. Oh, perfect. And do you get your dad and your mom to help you or your brothers and sisters or do you mostly do most of the production yourself? My mom and my sister help out with production. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Great job. Delaney, do you have a, a bottle or a, a, some product that you can show us? Uh -huh. Actually, I have the bottle right here. Great. Can everybody see that? Any other questions from our judges? Um, yes. Yeah, so my question for you is, what is your, um, what is the goal for your company? Um, the, my goal is to get the products in Sally Beauty and Target. I really want to also have it like shared throughout social media and stuff and people leaving reviews and make comments about it so we can get some positive feedback in, on it and use it to improve on our products and our new products. Zandra, just take a second and, and talk to her and, and everyone on the team about at this point, you, you, you know, you've got your product bottled, you, you've got the packaging, you've got some form of marketing done, What's what's the next big hurdle to prepare for in your from your experience? Yes, that's a really, really good question. Because a lot of people think like, oh, um, once you've made it in like a big chain store, so say Target, Walmart or any like the big ones or like CVS or um Walgreens or whatever, you think like, okay, that's like the that's like the finish line, but it's really just the beginning and the start of a, a longer process. Um so now that we've got it inside those stores and we got through the barrier of actually getting the yes, I would say, or getting the official purchase order um, and then completing that and then having it go out, I think our next step right now is really production. Um, so, you know, we initially when I first started the company, we were at home um, and then we got, then we grew into a, um, a small incubator space um, here throughout Buffalo. Um, and then we moved to another building. Um, and now we're at um, the warehouse. Uh, yeah, the facility that we're in now is about 5,000 square feet. 
um, and that's been able to, I guess, um, hold, um, we've been able to like fulfill like Target's orders and um, all the rest of the big chain stores orders. However, it's just a lot of work um, and I've become a brand on itself. Um, so there's a lot of different entities inside Xander, but more than just a product. So um, a lot of our time was being kept making the products and we can't, I couldn't do that all day. <laughs> so um, out, there's outsourcing right now. Um, and we begin to build those relationships with manufacturer and find the right one because you want to keep the products like their integrity still intact, trusting them. Um, and then, also, you mean you have to find it's it's manufacturing is really expensive. Um, so having that seat money up front because you know when you get into those big chain stores and stuff, there are, some of them are net sixty, some of them are net thirty. So you didn't even get to see that money into months later. <laughs> so um, a lot of it. So the problem is really just like being that that seat money um, in the beginning. So uh, that's really I guess the hurdle that we're jumping in now. So now we're um, getting investors and stuff, but. Honestly, we're just learning. I mean, we had a hiccup with this, um, the previous the, the, um, target order we just got out. Um, now, there was a lot of problems with our manufacturer. <laughs> uh, it was taking a long time. Um, our deadline was supposed to be literally like, okay, so um, we were supposed to have it um, so we shipped like on our way to Target's um, warehouse. Uh, the products was to leave my warehouse to go to their warehouse. Um, by like that Friday and the product still didn't get there from the manufacturer. So it was really it's a lot. Really, really, really <laughs> tight and we really had to like go really fast on everything. So um, it's really sometimes, I mean, I guess you pay for that, um, that sort of like, I guess, release of not having to do every little thing. But then again, like it's a gamble. At, like you have to trust, put your trust in other people. Sometimes they can't get it together either. So um, at the end of the day, as long as we try, it's okay. And we, yeah. I mean, we made it, so. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I just want to make sure that everyone understands that, you know, having a business is a wonderful thing. I have my own business as well, but it is work. And so the thought that a 13-year-old would pitch in front of this group and actually beat out uh, over 100 applicants to get here is so amazing. So congratulations on that. All right, judges, I assume you guys are ready for the next the next person. I'm sorry, Xandra, I kept you from judging. So if you want to take a little bit of time, you're good. <laughs> okay. Studiously. Yep. Give me your name, your school, your location, and let's hear about your business. Great. Four in five employers say that recent high school graduates aren't as prepared for jobs as they should be owing to lack of critical thinking and problem solving skills. But what can we do about this? Hi, my name is Sahithya Sinapathy, and I'm the founder and CEO of Studiously. I'm a high school senior at St. Mark's School of Texas in Dallas. Now you're probably wondering, why does Studiously exist? That's a great question, and I'd like to start with a story. When I was in ninth and 10th grade, I loved using Quizlet. Chances are, if you have a kid in school, they use a similar tool. Maybe you've heard of Sparknotes, Duolingo, or Kahoot. These are all popular education tools, but they all share one common thing. They only teach kids how to memorize and not learn. So when I got to 11th grade, I was shocked to find that school had transitioned away from asking the what to the how and the why. So my grades began to slip. But by the end of the year, I was able to get an A plus in every single class by just a couple of simple learning methods, including narrowing the focus of my study and focusing on my critical thinking. And that's how Studiously was born. Studiously is an ed tech platform promoting learning over memorization through artificial intelligence and collaboration. But what does that really mean? We do for education what Google Maps does for driving. See, the problem in driving is getting from point A to point B in a cost efficient and time efficient manner. And Google Maps solves that problem with computer intelligence. The problem in education is getting a student with little to no topic knowledge to a point in which they have a firm grasp over a subject whether that's math, science, English, or foreign language. And Studiously solves that problem with AI and collaborative learning. So let's talk about the product specifically. Studiously is an online education system, which means it's a web application with a companion mobile app. All you have to do is log on to the Studiously website and you'll have access to tons of learning features, including AI powered learning, group discussions, and collaborative learning modes. 
studiously takes the best of Khan Academy, Quizlet, and Blackboard, and fills the gap and betters it with AI. But what makes Studiously unique? Studiously's proprietary AI enables a student to write a question on a piece of paper, and let's say this is in a chemistry class about acids and bases. That student only has to upload their questions, and Studiously's AI will return them 10 questions of the same topic. So these are questions asking them if X compound is an acid or a base. If a student was using Quizlet, they'd be using some other study set that a student has made two years ago, and it might not even be about acids and bases, so they're not actually studying the relevant information for their test tomorrow or the next week. That way, with Studiously, students are receiving the most tailored education resources on the market. While Studiously's most basic features are free, for a monthly subscription of only 10 bucks, the cost of your Netflix subscription, you, only have, you get access to AI-powered learning, offline studying, and group collaboration so that our students can study anything, anywhere. And Studiously isn't just for students. It's also for teachers and schools. Teachers can retain their curriculum, so a chemistry teacher can teach all they need to teach throughout the year while using Studiously's centralized classroom management features, such as posting tests, discussions, quizzes, and homework on Studiously without having to use 50 different tools. And teachers can enhance their teaching with Studiously's AI in two ways. They can use Studiously's student, student, I believe I have a minute 30. Okay. Student data analytics using, use, uh, and see how students learn over time. And uh, teachers can use Studiously's AI to better their own test questions. We surveyed 10 teachers from six states and nine out of those 10 teachers said that they would make the switch from their current product to Studiously. But Studiously isn't only for education. It's also for corporate environment. We see Studiously being used for in-house training to help employees reach potential that they've never reached before and increase their productivity. Studiously can be used in companies to help better uh, course training and employee productivity. We're asking for 70K investment used for AI, marketing, website development, and beta testing. Specifically, the 45 of that 70 will go for AI and that AI will be focused on data acquisition because it's so cr crucial to uh, algorithms. The 8K of that 70 will go towards marketing, and the first two years of Studiously will be focused on students, which means that we'll be trying to build trust, building a brand, and building a solid user base. That means that while our target users are students, our target customers are the parents of those students who would be willing to pay 10 bucks a month to improve their students' grades from a C to an A or prepare them for the SAT and ACT. Lastly, nine of that 70 will go towards website development for a robust architecture, and four will go towards beta testing at schools and summer camps so that we can demonstrate re uh, learning outcomes of Studiously. My name is Sahithya Sanapathy, and I've developed Studiously to bring you learning for the 21st century. Thank you so much, and I'm open for questions and answer. Judges? Wow. Hi, this is wow. I'll go ahead. I'm scared of my job. I might lose my job if everyone makes Studiously at Johns Hopkins, right? They, yeah, they great question. So with any technology, that's <laughs> really, or sorry, did, uh, did you mean to complete your... No, 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 go ahead. Tell me what, I mean, it sounds really interesting. And, you know, I want to I want to dig a little bit further in the technical side, right? But is yeah. this for high school students? Is this for college students? Is it for business school students? Or is it for sort of everyone? Like, is it a new way to learn that you're sort of laying out? Gotcha. Yeah. So, um, so I'll answer the first part of that question, which is about like the teachers and the jobs. And then I'll answer the, like, I guess, role in education, if that's okay. Absolutely. Yeah. So the first part for teachers, like with any edu when any technology is being integrated into the education sphere, teachers are often, you know, thinking about how this impacts their own job security. And so the thing is, we'd like to provide examples of how studiously would be used in the classroom. Our purpose is to enhance the role of teaching. So while other competitors like Quizlet, would seek to replace the role of the teacher. We seek to enhance and supplement it. So teachers, so I guess studiously is blank slate going in. Stu teachers fill in their own curriculum uh, into the product and they use studiously to shift away from mundane tasks like using 50 different tools to post homework tests. Instead, now they can allocate their time better to help students. So to answer the second part of the question, studiously within education, we'd focus on high schools and colleges specifically but in the long term, we see it being able to use uh, in middle schools, uh, lower schools, uh, and colleges and universities. Okay, my, my follow-on question is regarding the AI, because that seems to be a very important component of this, right? And, you know, as you know, the technology is advancing very rapidly, right? So yeah. how are you going to be able to stay on top, you know, of, um, 
Now, I'm assuming you're using some kind of natural language processing and so forth, but how are you gonna, how is your company gonna stay in front, right, of this wave of AI? I mean, every other week there's a new innovation coming out, right? Right. So, you know, how would you how would you sort of answer that? Yeah, it's a really great question. And specifically, our market research has yielded that the AI usage in edtech is just starting to go up. So you're absolutely right about the AI. Um, AI within edtech is being used in three different domains. The first is in chatbots. So these are in bots that are used as teacher's assistants. The second is in data analytics. So used for gauging if an at-risk student will graduate or not. The third is within testing, which is what we're seeking to infiltrate. So within testing, R&D will be a critical part of how we play along with the algorithm, specifically while other competitors would be focusing their development on algorithms that help with memorization, which is a current trend in education. We'll be focusing on this sort of new idea of using, a, of, of using AI and you were right, natural language processing and computer vision to be helping uh, generate new questions and constantly refining our algorithms to stay on top uh, of like, you know, ed, AI and education. Does that answer your question or do you want me to explain That's a little right. more? Thank you. Marcia, you had a question for him? I did, so great presentation. My question has to do with standardized testing has basically had softwares that does exactly that where, you know, when you take GRE or SAT or whatever on the GRE and, you know, most graduate exams online, they geared the next question based on how well you answered that one. So my question has to actually do with the intellectual property or market competitiveness based on intellectual property. How do you distinguish yourself from that? And how do you make sure that um, you have a different market segment and are not you know, using the same algorithms that are used or the same AI that is used in those tests? Yeah, I'm glad you asked that. That's, that's a great question. And so I was touched upon this uh, a little when, uh, in the previous question when I was talking about the three sectors of like AI and education. You're completely right that there has been the standardized usage of AI in standardized testing for generating questions that are based on questions that are missed before. But we distinguish ourselves because the questions that are generated by AI are specifically based on the topic. So what we're doing is natural language processing Whereas the questions that the, that I guess the sort of AI you're talking about are in the realm of machine learning. Uh, and specifically within that, it's in deep, uh, deep learning. So specifically we differentiate ourselves because it's a complete new sector within AI that's removed away from the sort of AI that's behind these sorts of questions. So one, the concept is a little different and two, the actual algorithm and the way that we're developing the software uh, intellectual property wise is going to have a substantial difference. So talk to us a little bit about, I'm sorry, Marja had another question. No, I just said, thank you. Oh, okay. Talk to us a little bit about what you learned from the judges from round one to round two. We just want to better understand, um, how you have changed your business model, um, from what you started with to, to where we are now. Yeah, so, so um, I started the year as a pure technologist. I had really like no business experience, but throughout the year, owing to like the judges' comments, I was able to gain a lot of business financial experience. And specifically, I learned the importance of you know, funding. Funding is so key when you're starting a business, especially in the technology sector. And so when I started uh, the competition, I wasn't asking for any funding, which is obviously you know, incredulous. But as I went along, I learned that you, know, like you need funding for data because data is so important in technology. You need funding for marketing. You need funding uh, for, for website development. And so I learned the importance of funding. I also learned about marketing strategy. So when I started, I was thinking that students would be paying for the product. But what I realized was those were our target users. Our target customers are the parents of those students who would be willing to pay the monthly subscription to you know, like improve their students' grades. If we can prove to those parents that you know, a student who's at a C uh, level and their classes will go up to an A level, they'd be willing to chip in that 10 bucks a month so that you know, they can better their child's education. Great job, okay. Thank you so much, yep, great thank job. You. Thanks. Everybody, I'm sorry, Xandra has a question. Sure. Go for it. Um, so my question is, what is, how are you planning to market this? Because I feel like, um, even though you said like it's really similar to like Quizlet, which I'm familiar with, and then Blackboard, um, and all, and things that are already existing, um, I want to know like how are you going to market it? Like, what is the plan? Like, is it? I know you said it's for um, it would be for like high school to college students, but um, I feel like this product is more something that like 
could sell to like universities or to the schooling where you can come in and teach them basically educating them through the process and then selling it to your students if that makes sense or whatever so like i'm thinking like so what is like the end goal are you trying to make this separate so like individual person like me as a student i will go on it and um subscribe to it or are you doing it to sell as a package to like universities or to schools yeah, your intuition is absolutely right. So the way we're going to do this isn't by, you know, like trying to outcompete, you know, large players like Quizlet or Duolingo based on like SEO, AdWords, uh, or like social media marketing. I think that's not going to be a successful strategy because those competitors ignore the schools and universities. You know, they only target the individuals and they're losing out on a lot of the market. So our strategy for the first years will be specifically be based on implementing the freemium model at schools. Um, which requires actually no legal, you know, like bureaucracy to implement a free product at the school. What we'll do is that that premium model in which, you know, they have access to the AI feature and the group discussion will be available to students if they pay. And we'll see, we'll market specifically based on like, you know, geographic regions of schools. So we'll target specific schools in certain areas and cities um, and, and market the freemium feature to the students specifically at those schools. Um, while uh, I guess like implementing the product as a free product at schools. The long-term process for um, marketing is while the first two years are focused on the individual, three through five, years three through five, uh, my goal is to expand into school partnerships. So, you know, getting those like relationships with schools and expanding on the trust that we build with individual students. So what we'll do is specifically we'll work with the, uh, with the school principals. We'll work with the university deans to set up school-wide um, school deals in which we have all the students at the university or school, you know, involved in the studiously process, which is something that other competitors aren't doing right now. But thanks for asking. Great job. Judges take two minutes to score. Thank you so much. Thank Great you. Job. Everyone has been just amazing tonight. Uh, make me very proud. Uh, it's just, uh, you have no idea. <laughs> so, it's just wonderful to see you guys all prepared and ready to answer questions. I know it's not easy, but, um, but it's important that, you're, that you are the most passionate person for your business. You are your own brand. And so it's important that you stay passionate. You are always ready to answer the questions. We talk about elevator pitches, but you know, as an entrepreneur, you're always pitching yourself in one way or another. I actually was at a pitch competition yesterday and, and all I could think about was, wow, you know, these were all adults and I'm working with young people and you guys are, are just as good, if not better. So judges are good. Any, any delays? We have one more to go. And it's 8.05. You know, I like to do things on time. So <laughs> thank you all. Bike where? Are you on the call? Yes, I'm here. All right, uh, give us your name, your school, your location, and tell us about your product. Yeah, I'll just start with the intro. Um, so imagine you're on your morning commute, still pretty sleepy, and you start to make a right turn. Bam, you realize you've hit a cyclist. They were in a blind spot, and in your large car, it was, there's no way you would have been able to see them. This is a problem cyclists and drivers all over the world face, and one I face on my daily ride to school. My name is Mahi Kola. I am 16 years old and I'm a senior at the Harker School in San Jose, California. I'm excited to share my company, Bikeware, and how together we can save thousands of lives every single day. The problem is quite simple. While many roads have already built in bike lanes and cities have adopted the Bicycle Friendly Initiative, bikers are still prone to accidents every day. In 2015 alone, there were 818 casualties from these accidents and many more accidents. From major blind spots on large cars and being cut off in bike lanes, biker safety is an ever prevalent issue. The solution is bikeware. We work to prevent bike car accidents by improving the communication between drivers and cyclists through our inexpensive, convenient, and effective app. The app supports both bikers and drivers. As a driver, you're prompted to pick biking on the home screen and then start your ride. It's that simple. Cyclists can continue their ride hands-free. In the back end, we track we track the biker's location and anonymously report it to drivers using the app. Just as Waze alerts drivers of nearby obstacles, drivers will hear a voice alert saying there's a biker approaching. This extra second of awareness is all a biker needs to avoid an accident. 
We ensure bikers and drivers are consistently using the app, the Wi-Fi Doppler Effect, which is a program that is enabled on all smartphones. It allows us to track how fast a car is or a person is going and allows us to know when, let's say, they're in a car or they're biking. So we can send them a notification when they're stuck or wide to ensure they're using the app every single time. Our monetization model is two-pronged. After five free trial rides, bikers will be um, asked to pay $9.99 a month for their rides. All subscribers will also have access to discounted cycling rates for some of our partner companies. In all every transaction that occurs with these partner companies, we will receive a commission. Therefore, our monetization includes both a subscription model, but also a commission model. The real solution behind Bikeware is that it's simple but effective. By warning drivers, we increase their reaction time and give them a second to consider those around them. This inherently also promotes green transportation, which is a social mission behind Bikeware. We hope to partner with city councils and environmental organizations to promote this initiative. So what makes this different? Competitors like CycleAlert and Garmin use physical sensors, which can cost up to $300, must be manually turned on and require every driver and biker to buy the sensor. On the other hand, bikeware is extremely convenient, inexpensive, and effective. For example, because we use a subscription model, you can choose to unsubscribe at any time. I like to bike to school every single day, but during the summer, I'm usually not here at home, and so I don't need to be biking. That means I can subscribe for nine months and then not subscribe for the other three months of the summer. It's also unlikely that bikers will purchase are these clunky machines from our competitors without a guarantee they'll avoid a crash, which is something they have to do with their competitors. But by using an app, we can make this process much easier. In addition, our emerging partnership with Google Maps provides us with a large initial driver base, justifying our $9.99 biker price. For financials, we're looking at a profitable year three at $322,000. We were conservative in our estimates and did not factor in a partnership with Google, just to give you guys the raw data. This placed us at negative $110,000 for the first two years, but jumped back strong in year three. And by year five, we we're making $7.6 million every year. As far as current traction, we've conducted beta tests with our Los Altos community, with the Los Altos Bike Club. We've already partnered with our city council to promote bikeware under their Bicycle Friendly Community Initiative. And we're currently in talks with prominent Google Maps executives to pilot this feature in small Bay Area communities. If, you were, if I was to win this money for bikeware, this money would be spent on three different things. First is to further data, beta test within Silicon Valley. Second is further app development. And then third, we began, we began our partnerships with some local cyclist companies to really get that commission model started and to get bikers onto the app. And lastly, I just want to conclude with why me. I've always been interested in technology and business and the intersection of the two. And after facing this problem on a daily basis and having reluctant parents who were unwilling to send me out on a bike alone because they were scared of um, the unawareness of drivers, I wanted to create my own solution for this. I've also had entrepreneur experience with my other business that I've run for four years now, and I've been awarded the Stukin Entrepreneur of the Year and second place in the NFT Con Edison Challenge. In all of these, I just want to say I'm extremely passionate about this issue, and I want to partner with you and use this money that we will be awarded to actually make a real impact in our company. Thank you so much for listening to this pitch, and I'll be happy to answer any questions at this time. Thank you. So, so I have a question. Great presentation, by the way. Um, you know, you mentioned that you're a prior entrepreneur, which is uh, something I think that, you know, what I've seen as a academic, um, you know, the more you do it, the better you get always. <laughs> and you hear yeah, the same questions. For sure. So for everyone who's a first time entrepreneur, you know, yeah, you know, it's, it's not completely fair because, you know, you're, I think this, this is more for, you know, youth entrepreneurs. But with that <laughs> said, uh, what I've noticed is that, um, your, your business model is very interesting. However, what, explain to me the problem. I can understand when a biker would turn on the app on the phone, and I understand there's like latitude, longitude in the phone, so you can see where that biker is going on the Google Maps. What I don't understand, and try to help me sort of you know, understand this, is me as a person who's driving my car, why would I turn on this app, right? Because I don't, you know, in the mornings, I just turn on the radio or, or whatever it is and, you know, listen to stuff. So why am I going to go press this app? Because in, you know, at the top of my head is not, I'm going to hit a biker. Let me turn this on. So yeah. that I'm not here, right? Like in ways you're trying to go home. And so you want to see where in the accidents are, right? So you have an incentive. I, I'm not quite sure what the incentive is for the person in the automobile. Now, if you get a deal with Tesla and you, you know, Tesla shares the data, 
with all the cars. Okay, perfect. I get it. Right. But, you know, just suppose I have an old car and I, you know, it does it work through the phone for the, the person inside the car. And, and, and do I have to hit the app and turn it on so that you can, you know, know where I'm driving around? Is that yes. Clear? Yes. Yeah, yeah, no, that, that makes a lot of sense. And that was actually one of the issues that was presented by one of the judges. Um, and so we were kind of forced to think about what the exact benefit is for drivers. And obviously there is, you know, the, the reward that you get from, you know, like helping prevent these accidents and not being involved in one yourself. But like you said, it's not always on top of your mind. Um, so one of the future partnerships that we really want to start exploring is actually partnerships with insurance companies, because we found that insurance and um, being able to get a lower rate because you'll be able to, let's say you were using the app while um let's say you were in an accident but you were using the app that could give you a lower rate at your insurance company and that would really encourage bike uh, drivers sorry um to be using this app consistently um and as far as the notifications the notifications would be through your phone but we really wanted to emphasize that they are voice alerts um they are not any like alerts that you actually have to look at your phone because that further distracts you from the road um, so there are voice alerts and they simply say biker approaching. Um, we actually have a demo app and that demo app we've been using with our Los Altos community. Like I said, um, we've had a beta test with um, a few different communities, um, the bicycle club as well as cars, about 100 car drivers who've actually been using this and then about 75 bikers. Um, so with that, we've seen that this problem um, is ever prevalent. Like these bikers really do feel that kind of danger, especially when they're going really fast. And then for drivers, they found that a lot of the times they wouldn't even realize that there was a biker there, just they, they were there and they only knew that there was one there because they got that notification from bikers. So we've been able to actually um, see this in the market and find that market fit and verify that that exists. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate that. I mean, I'm almost thinking that it would be good if you can put the biker on the Google map because everyone uses Google map to drive around and mm -hmm. usually they're using the Google map because they don't know the area, right? And so they're just staring at their Google phone. So if you put that little biker <laughs> on the yeah. map, they're like, okay, I, don't, I shouldn't hit that biker, right? So I wonder if the, the right, um, one of the strategies that you could sort of think about is, you know, how do you, because you're out on the West Coast, get in a relationship with Google and say, hey, look, can we just put our biker folks on your map, right? And then, then, then you will solve everything because a lot of drivers are using those Google Maps or maybe app, you know Apple Map, and you know then it's you know, you're protecting more people's lives and so on. So the 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 pitch to Google and Apple, you know, is that you're going to save bikers' lives and you're going to help the you know environment and so forth. But then the question I have is, you know, can you monetize that without giving them giving them a percentage of the share or whatever it may be, right? So, but, but it's very interesting how you're trying to merge these two components of the internet of things, right? On the bike and inside the car. Thank you. Yeah, I actually just wanted to add on to that. Um, we actually have been um, talking to different Google Maps executives about this kind of problem, very, mu very much on a casual setting, but just to get their feedback on if they would be interested in something like this. And what we found is that Google Maps itself would be interested in implementing um, a feature for their drivers because they see it as something that they can just offer to their drivers. Um, what they are kind of reluctant to do is that biker acquisition because um, we would be taking charge of, you know, all the social media efforts, um, actually reaching out to all these bike clubs to get their members on it. And that for Google is not something that they really want to invest their money in or time in. Um, so for them, what they really think is that, look, if you can come back with the prominent biker base, then we'll be able to get you onto Google Maps, and that way we'll have a huge bike, um, driver reach. And so, um, you know, kind of a little bit out of pitch competition, one thing we were thinking about is maybe offering um, like a free version of the app until we have that prominent biker base who's willing to actually pay for this feature and then, you know, get onto Google Maps and then we have both sides ready to go. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Great presentation. Thank you. Any other questions? Do you have a question, Ryan? I, I wanted to ask uh, about like how this kind of came about. I know I had heard it um, earlier, but can you talk a little bit more about how the, the sort of the, the product idea kind of developed? Um, yeah, sure. Um, so it really kind of started when I was in middle school and I really wanted to start biking to school um, with my friends. 
and my parents were extremely reluctant um and we live in a you know very calm neighborhood there really aren't you know a lot of bus drivers so even in that my parents were extremely reluctant but eventually i got to high school and they were willing to you know start letting me ride and i i see that kind of fear every single day even just in my daily bike rides um because this, especially in the morning commute Drivers are going so fast because they're late to work, they're late to school, and it can get really dangerous if they aren't looking for you. And um, I've seen firsthand that those kind of blind spots and I'm like extra careful. And I felt like, what if there was a way for the two of us to communicate so they know I'm here and I don't have to be so worried. And so this is a perfect solution for you know parents who want to send their kids out and feel safe that they're sending their kids out or even just avid bikers who are going out with their group of friends or their local bike club that they're all together and um, they feel safe in that environment. Um, I can tell you here in, in New York that it's a real big problem. Like yeah. it's not safe for bikers at all. Yeah. Um, I, I was so surprised to kind of just see how dangerous it is. Yeah. <laughs> Even for a driver on that side, um, just how many bikers you can miss because you're going so fast. Any other questions? Great job. Thank you. Great job. So judges, take a second um, or two to finalize your scores. And um, to all of our applicants, I will be reviewing scores. They're due to me by noon tomorrow. I will be making the announcement on the winners by Monday or probably on Monday because I know I'm going to get a couple of emails. And um, it gives me an opportunity to do a couple of things. One is we like to make an announcement uh, because the winner will be the IMVEST Youth Business of the Year. And with that comes not only the notoriety of actually having won this competition and survived the competition and got to the very end of it because I know that it was a lot of work. And um, to go from the concept profile all the way to today takes a lot. And it's your summer. I know you guys were busy. I know you wanted to do other things, but instead you were on group coaching. You were doing one-on-one -on -one coaching. And I'm really proud to see that you stuck it through because that's what entrepreneurship is going to mean. You will need to have that. Um, you will need to have patience in order to be a really good entrepreneur. And you will have to work hard. You will need to uh, make yourself available to connect, to network, to um, make sure that you continue to, to, to build on your brand, your marketing, and your operations, and to keep things going. So I love the fact that, you know, when I started this competition, I had people saying, there's no way you're going to get young people to commit to this. Um, and then I also heard that there was no way that I would be able to get young people from across the country to play a role and to be a part of it. And we had applicants this year from probably at least 20 states and Canada. So I want to congratulate you on everything that you've done. I'm really proud of you. And you will be notified about, you know, who's the first and second and third place winners. Um, some of you will receive awards, although you may not have placed in the top three. There are certain prizes like consultations that will be given to all of you. So everyone will receive something. However, if you are um, selected or if you earn the title of I Invest Youth Business of the Year, then you will not only walk away with cash prizes and in-kind prizes and an amazing title, but you will also... Um, walk away with the opportunity to be a judge for next year. And that's always a great thing. I think our, Risha, are you on the call? Our last year winner? Yes, I am, hello. <laughs> I'm not sure why she's not judging this, but she did judge in rounds one and two. Um, tell them a little bit about, about you. So she, this is our, our First and foremost, I have to say this, she's our first uh, female-led team winner. So I'm really proud of that. And she just recently um, went off to college. And tell us a little bit about your product and where you are now. Yeah, so um, hello. It's been so cool to hear all of your guys' pitches. You guys did such an amazing job. Um, I participated in iInvest last year with my business Pulse Wearables that I started 
a few years ago. It's a wearable patch for people with heart conditions um, that basically allows them to continue being physically active at safer levels. Um, so this is a product that I've been super passionate about um, and I'm actually bringing it, I'm now at USC in the Ivy and Young Academy. Um, and so I brought it here. I've talked to some of my peers here um, who are interested in working on this product um, so that we can continue and continue with developing the product as well as developing the business. So I've been super excited to kind of see my passion for this project matched in a lot of my peers here. Um, yeah, I Invest was a really cool opportunity, cool experience last year. Um, Michelle has been super supportive in everything that we've done um, and has definitely made it uh, a goal of hers to like spread us, feature us, mm -hmm. and put us, put, sh shine a light on us. Um, so that's been amazing. Thank you so much. I saw you chime in. I was like, yeah, I'm shocked she's not judging, but that's okay. So she got an opportunity to be a judge this year. And so to have someone who's won the competition in the past score your applications, take a look at you and continue to mentor you is important for us because we see this as the I Invest community. So once you become a part of it, we're not going to let you go. And so when you have accomplishments, whether it's at your school or you go off to college or you open up a new location or you hire, let me know. Send me an email. I want to let people know how successful you are. You're like my extended, extended family all over the United States. It's just amazing. I'm in New Orleans. I've got, you know, youth participating from all over the country. And that feels really good to me. So. With that said, it's getting late. Did we? All right, it's 8.24. I'm a big stickler for time, people. So congratulations to everyone. You did a fantastic job. Um, I'm really proud of you. I'm going to let the judges say a little bit before they go. And I want to thank the judges uh, for making this commitment. I mean, you have to know, God, this is a Thursday night and we're all business people. So it's a, it's a commitment to be on the call for everyone. And I'm just so grateful that you take this time out and you care enough about this program to do this and to spend the six months with us. So, you know, you have no idea how hard it is to get a business person to commit to six months to do something. <laughs> so I'm really proud of all my judges, my sponsors, um, prize sponsors as well. But I'm, no, I'm, I'm definitely more proud than anything um, of those of you who pitched tonight. So I think this is the first year I don't think anybody's in college. Anybody in college that actually pitched tonight? Now that is amazing. And I'm really happy to see that. So uh, not that we don't welcome all the college students, but to see a younger group being this passionate about entrepreneurship is, is really important. So I'm going to let the judges kind of wrap up. And if they have anything to say to you, we'll do that. And we'll get off the call and just look for an email from me and a press release announcing our winners and um, you will receive all of your winnings. You will get a package from me with a number of things in it, including your certificate, um, all of your, your check and everything else. We make sure that you get everything you need. I do want to stop and congratulate Baby Bumps because they won that 14 day marketing challenge. I don't know if they're on the call, but they uh, did a fantastic job. All of you did, but they, they actually won the competition and they will also walk away with $250. So Tamika, do you have anything you want to want to say? You mute it. Do I need to unmute you? I, okay. I think everybody did an amazing job this year. I agree with you that the talent is an amazing. It's amazing for such young minds to have this type of talent. It is, Amazing. We thought about playing with Barbie dolls and building go-karts when we lived. We were smaller from Tonka trucks and stuff, but these kids are, you guys are amazing. You are doing some amazing things, especially the winner from last year. I remember your product and I'm like, where, where do these kids think of this stuff at? This is amazing. And the 13, the 12 or 12 or 13 year old this year, it's amazing. And I'm, I'm proud of all of you guys. I work with kids every day. And so 
get your friends, get your families to, to get in this competition each year. Even if you don't win, you won already just this six months of getting the coaching, getting your business plan looked at by professionals. Even if you don't win tonight, you've already won. You've already won. The, the business plans that you guys have now and the coaching you've received, you've already won. Everybody has won just by being in this competition. So I just want to say congratulations to all of you guys. I think you've done an amazing job today. Keep up the good work and don't let this be your last business. Yes. This absolutely. should be your first business. Keep it going. This is the first one to many. So come back next year with another business. Yeah. And again, that congratulations. That. Thank you, Tamika. Ryan, would you like to say something? <laughs> I just wanted to say that, uh, that like all the pictures were incredible. And I wanted to just share that, you know, one of the biggest things that uh, takes place, not only in terms of building this competition and the, the, the idea of the, the business plan and the pitch, but in this process of entrepreneurship and social entrepreneurship, you begin to really own learning and you begin to develop real leadership skills and all that sort of starts. And you, without, it, it, without you even being conscious of it. And so I think, you know, over the long run, you'll see that, you know, in the next year, in the next year, in the next two, three years, whatever happens, if this builds, awesome. If not, you'll have learned so much through this process. Uh, and you'll begin to actually see yourself as quite different from other friends of yours that have never dabbed into entrepreneurship. So congratulations for that. Thank you. Thank you. Maji, would you like to say something? I just want to echo basically what the judges before me said. Amazing job, very good presentations, and keep up the great work. And thank you, Michelle, for making this possible for, for all the, um, you know, our young competitors to compete and, and get a taste of innovation and entrepreneurship. Thank you. Thank you. Jim? Yeah, I just want to uh, say thanks a lot for um, pitching tonight. You guys did a great job. Don't tell anybody, but you probably did better than a lot of MBA students graduating <laughs> that I've seen. And that's the truth. And I can tell that you guys have taken in a lot of feedback because your pitches are not what, you know, high school students can do by themselves. You can, you can tell that, you know, you, you spent a lot of time learning from coaches and, you know, you, you hit all the, the, the bullet points that you're supposed to hit, right? Now, what's really interesting is that, you know, when you go on to your careers, you're going to go off in college or wherever it may be, or even if you go to investment bank, the ability to pitch an idea clearly is very, very powerful. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so you'll see, you know, while you watch go through more competitions, I uh, definitely will encourage you guys to go pitch this everywhere, right? Whether you win or lose, it really doesn't matter. You get this wonderful ability to practice in front of, you know, a crowd and tell a story and, you know, Try to convince them, right? Which is which is great. Now, not every one of your pitches is going to go well. Okay, so as an entrepreneur, one thing that you have to understand is, you know, sometimes it's going to be really good and sometimes it's going to be really bad, and you're just going to like feel it's like a roller coaster, up and down and up and down. I've seen a lot of people have success success and failures, right? And then, um, you know, as entrepreneurs, um, you know, so don't think it's just. The, clear sailing it's <laughs> right now you're, you're trying to win five thousand dollars right at some point you're going to try to raise five hundred thousand dollars and then you'll be trying to get you know five million dollars and so you know the 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 excitement though in it all is is really really fun right so you know i teach full time but i also have a, a startup company it's not so much of a startup company anymore and we do machine learning and ai and we're kind of riding this trend right because there's a lot of data and what you have to be aware of is there's trends in the marketplace right it's a little bit easier to ride like a technology trend or some, or whatever it may be, right? And you know, pay attention to what's going on in the markets. Mm -hmm. um, you know, don't get frustrated if people say no to you. If you don't win, don't worry about it. Just keep applying. I promise you. Every time I've seen I've seen some entrepreneurs who start out at Johns Hopkins, they're researchers. They're horrible. They're complete. They miss everything, right? They don't know product market fit. They don't know how much money they need to raise. They don't know who's going to buy their product. They just really love their product because you know intellectually they're interested in, right? But they go back and they pitch and they pitch and pitch and they take feedback. And by the end of like a year, they're amazing. <laughs> they're just super duper amazing. So you know the point is that you can definitely learn this stuff, but you have to do it by practicing, right? 
So you guys are at a particular level. If you just keep going out there and just go to every competition and pitch, you're just going to get better and better and better. To, at some point, I'm sure we'll see you on TED Talks, right? Talking about your successful businesses. But, you know, very impressive. Um, you know, A plus is all around. I, I know I'm looking at the best, right? I don't know. Michelle, how many people submitted? We actually had over 100 to start applications. We had 24 semifinalists. And, and that's the one we trained up to this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah, you guys are definitely the cream of the crop, I can tell. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. Now, if somebody on here, if you're on TED Talk and you don't mention I invest, I'm not going to be. <laughs> so, just let you know. Zandra, would you like to close it out? Yeah, sure, absolutely. So, thank you again, uh, Mr. Michelle, for giving me this opportunity. Um, and congratulations to all the finalists. Um, I have to agree with everything Jim said in regards to like if you're going to be a full entrepreneur um, and learn the whole process and the journey of it, it's really exciting. Um, and it's really um, kind of, I guess, spontaneous in a way. I mean, it's about taking risk and seeing, um, put, put it out there and seeing um, what people, uh, your customers, how they react and how the market reacts and how all the different things you can do that and kind of fade away by researching. So like you said, being um, in pitching um, for investors um, and depending on what series round of funding that you're in, uh, it's really important to, you know, get your pitch down and, like you said, the best way you're going to do it is regards to um, practicing, practicing, practice, practice, practice. Um, even for me at this stage in the round of funding that I'm at, um, I do a lot of pitch competition stuff too. Um, and it is really interesting to see like different judges. Um, and again, not every pitch competition is going to go the way some are bad, some are good, but I guess the learning experience only makes you stronger. Um, and for what to expect next time, I think my advice would really just be to make sure you, um, have fun with it and that you practice it to the point where you don't need to see your slides you don't need to see um the words written down you can literally when i practice with it i close my eyes and i just like act like i have a clicker in my hand i go like this um and that's how i'm able to like get into flow like you need to be able to like just say everything without having to look or having to do with things because that's how you know you know if you really that's how the investors can judge whether you really are passionate about it and that you really know your stuff so i think the biggest thing is really just to practice and just have fun with it too and also researching your market and stuff you know hopping on the trends and knowing like and then, i mean because investors when they invest in there's one thing for i guess um there's two things you should look for i guess and when you go into a pitch competition yes you want to go to, i guess people make you feel like funding or whatever um but then also you don't know you never know who's who are the judges and who's in the room um there's probably a lot of like investors that um or angel investors or whatever that's in the room um and it's really good they like to hear i guess a a long-term plan you know they want to make <laughs> so i think it's really good to make sure you do your research and have a skill to be able to pitch it and then, um all that good stuff as well but thank that, you thank you so much so everybody that's tonight and um you look forward to um hearing from me very soon again congratulations great job and have a great night judges thank you thank you thank you i owe you um everything at this point <laughs> so uh that wraps the night and for all of our guests i'm not sure everyone who's on the call i see there are few um, of you. Thank you for joining us and um, continue to tell people about I invest. We want to continue to grow it. So we will start taking applications March 1st of next year. They will, they, uh, the applications will be due on May 1st. So there's several months to get all, in all your information, but please help us spread the word. And if you all can stop right now and go to your Facebook page and just say, or your social media account and say, Hey, I participated and it was whatever you think it was, that would be great for us. And be sure to tag us um, at iInvest Comp or iInvest Competition. Thank you so much. Good night. Thank you, Ms. Jackson. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, thank you to all the judges who are in this competition, you know, for all the support I've gotten since, you know, the preliminary round all the way up to here. Uh, thank you guys just so much. Thank you. Thank you. I love that smile. Thanks. Hi, everyone. Good night. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Thank you and good job to everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. You did a great job. All of you were wonderful. I hope you know that. I will have um I'll have the video ready. I'll definitely send a link out so that you can
can see how great you were. <laughs> Good luck, everyone. Good night. <laughs>